everyone. I'm here at the Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. <laughs> Sit down. Our today's prayer is Psalm 118, 24, and Gizmo picked it out. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That's a very popular one. Thank you, Sean. And now I'll go to the prayer request. Take out Smokey the Bear. All right. Please keep Sherman your prayers. We went to the surgeon today. She wants him, she put a shot in his uh, shoulder in the back and um, she was really nice. It was a woman, she was really, really nice. So she gave Sher uh, Sherman a shot and then she wants him to go to physical therapy for a special she said his shoulder is frozen and the rotator cuff she wants him to do gentle arm stretches and stuff like that and then you know if it don't get better with therapy then trying to avoid surgery at all costs because all surgeries are dangerous but then if it still needs surgery after this because either way the shoulder is going to be unfrozen and she said the bulging herniated discs in his neck can make your elbow and your shoulder and arm hurt as well. And she thinks he has tennis elbow as well. So, a lot going on there. But that's what happened today. So please keep Sherman your prayers. Rhonda Karshner, Cindy and Jim, Abby and Liam, Jimmy Myers, Dora Carper, Layla and her son of Mill. Bonnie Jean, Bonnie Jean's cat Misty that she returns home, Bonnie Jean's dad that he finds a good affordable place to live, and Bonnie Jean's sister-in-law Lori, Jimmy Myers, Layla and her son Mill, Norma Boyer and Garnet Boyer, Elizabeth Jeffries, Ray and Donna Dunlap, Judy Thompson, and Joyce Light. Joyce uh, was supposed to come yesterday I seen her when we was going out of the store. She was going in at Family Dollar. We were coming out. She was going in. Because she's like, let me hold the door for you. And she's like, ah, it's you guys. She didn't know it was us. Because, you know, I was in the wheelchair. And <laughs> that's why she's like, let me hold the door for you. And she didn't even know it was us. And then we talked. And she was coming. And going to bring Dandy. That's her doll. I love to see Dandy. Love to play at Dandy's. Such a, we got him a toy today too. Such a loving baby. I actually have him two toys here waiting on him. And um, we got him a pig today, squeaky pig. And um, she uh, came and sure went out to help her. And she said that she'd come back next week instead because it was starting to rain and she didn't want to stay out. So she's in her 80s, I think 84. And she gets around so much better than both of us. She said she was blessed with good health and genes, which is really good. She has no health problems or no medicine. She just goes and goes and goes, drives three hours to one to family trips up north and by herself, her and dandy. It scares me. But she does it. Oh, I don't know how, but she does it. But she's supposed to come back next week, so we'll have Dandy's toys waiting on him. And uh, Mom's cat, Sunny, and we've also got him a toy today. And I felt the hair clips Mom was looking for, so I got those. We got my pictures back from the, the little people. My gum people. Oh, okay. Extra. Extra chewing gum. When you get it in the box like this, um, I got the spearmint this time. They have a people in them, different little people, and I always cut them out and collar them. I put some in my stones that I make. I made me and Sherm down at the bottom and put it in a stone for him. I got some stuck here on my stand, decorating them, and I thought I did. I don't know. I have them somewhere but they're really cute okay so today we're going to be reading luke chapter 10 verse 38 through chapter 11 
verse 13, Psalm 76, the whole psalm, and Proverbs chapter 12, verses 15 and 16. All right. At the home of Martha and Mary, they were followers of Jesus. They were also the sisters of Lazarus, the one who Jesus uh, brought back from the dead, said, Lazarus, come out. Remember, he was dead for like a few days before Jesus got there. And he, Lazarus came out with this, like a mummy with his uh, burial stuff falling off him. Jesus teaching on prayer tells you what to say. People's like, how do I pray? And Jesus teaches them. And I'm sure everybody knows that one. Father, hallowed be your name. You know, and give us today our daily bread. I'm sure everybody knows that prayer, hopefully. And, but if not, we'll hear it today. All right, so let's get started here. Up close is what these are good for. <clears throat> so let's start at the home of Martha and Mary. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She was busy cooking and doing all the work. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And now Jesus is going to teach on prayer. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. And it goes, you know, on, but it's not said here. And, you know, it's worded a little different in King James Version that you probably heard. This is the New International Version. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, Lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose that one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, Yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Will you let him in? Will you let him save you? That's what you need to think about. Which of your fathers, or sorry, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Just think, would you give your child a fish to feed them, or would, would you give him a poisonous snake that will kill them? Or, if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion, which can kill with its venom? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Because God is our Father, just as you are mothers or fathers to your children, and 
you want the best for them and want to, you know, help them in any way you can. And that's what God wants for us even more. He loves each and every single one of us on this earth because he made every single one of us. Some people don't believe that. Some people don't believe in God at all, but it's the truth. Just think about it. How do they think this stuff came to be? The Big Bang Theory. Stupid. Just go outside by yourself. Look up at all the trees, how beautiful they are, how they change colors from different seasons, the beautiful flowers in the fields that God has put there, the beautiful sky. Just lay in the grass and look up at the sky and you'll see shapes in the clouds. We used to do that all the time when we were kids. Just listen to some Christian music. Just look at the wonderful things that God has made. Look at the creatures he's made. The monkeys that are close to people. I think God made those monkeys and stuff that they say we came from, which God made you. Don't believe in that evolution stuff. It's not true. I think God made the monkeys like that because he wanted to see if we would believe the evolution story because he knows what's going to happen. To see the people that will go over to that side and actually believe we were monkeys, came from monkeys, or believe in God, that God made us. Like, God's like, I'm going to make these monkeys and make them do human-like things and see if people believe in evolution or they stay faithful to me. That's my opinion. But just look at the beautiful animals and everything. And they don't believe that it's from God. I don't, I, I don't understand. Not at all. Okay, so that's where we're stopping with the book of Luke today. Psalm 76, for the director of music with stringed instruments, a psalm of Asaph, a song. And it is, let's see, 12 verses. God is re-owned in Judah. In Israel, his name is great. His tent is in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shields and the swords, the weapons of war. You are radiant with light more majestic than mountains rich with game. The valiant lie, plunder. They sleep their last sleep. Not one of the warriors can lift his hands. At your rebuke, God of Jacob, both horse and chariot lie still. It is you alone who are to be feared. Yes, Lord. Who can stand before you when you are angry? No one, because it'll do them no good, right, Lord? From heaven you pronounced judgment, and the land feared and was quiet. When you, God, rose up to judge, to save all the afflicted of the land, surely your wrath against mankind brings you praise, and the survivors of your wrath are restrained. Make vows to the Lord your God, and fulfill them, let all the neighboring lands bring gifts to the one to be feared, the Lord. He breaks the spirit of rulers. He is feared by the kings of the earth. As well, they should be. Every single one of us, because our life is in God's hands. Will you choose to let Jesus save you and go? you can go to paradise? and bring others to paradise as well if you bring them to the Lord, bring their souls to Jesus? Or do you not want to believe and not accept Jesus and don't believe in them even and go to hellfire for eternity where you'll always be tortured for eternity? You won't get out. You will suffer for eternity. Your soul will suffer. 
people would die for a drop of bark there or dead. But people would die for water in hell. They would they cry out for water. But they don't get it. That's why the saying that I've always heard, people in hell want ice water too. When you say you want something and no, you're not getting it. They're like, well, people in hell want ice water too. So, and that's true. But they don't get it. And nobody can make that decision for you but you. You can't get saved because somebody wants you to. You have to get saved because you want to. Take it seriously. You have to want to. Don't do it just to please someone. All right, I'll do this to shut them up, but I don't believe in this. God knows. He knows. And when you accept Him truly, trust me, you'll feel the love in your heart. And it's like no other. Is it, Sherman? Huh? Yeah. When God, when Jesus comes in your heart, it's like no other love. Right. Okay, guys, so now we're going to Proverbs chapter 12, verses 15, 16, and 17. Proverbs 12, 15 says, The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Proverbs 12, 16. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. And Proverbs chapter 12, verse 17. An honest witness tells the truth, but a false witness tells lies. So true. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Sorry we're late getting this up today. We, like I said, we had to go to the surgeon and... We were pretty busy today. I hope you guys have a blessed rest of your day. Bye, guys. God bless. Let's bring those souls to Jesus.